Um, so thanks for having me again. Um, hope that everybody, hold on, let me just get this and everybody can see the slides. Um, so um, I wanna talk about something that um, sort of the next step from, for instance, what Sam was talking about and, and some of the reproducibility stuff here. Uh, one of the challenges that I and others face as data editors at the end of the academic pipeline is that when we start to verify what the materials are that have been sent to us, whether that's during peer review, which typically doesn't happen, or after peer review, which is where we come in, or if others want to do it before peer review because it's an open archive that's associated with, say, a working paper or something like that, what we really are interested in is, are the results that are reported in the particular publication credible? And transparency is one way of, of getting at that. Reproducibility has um, a purpose here that um, I can sometimes rephrase as, do I have everything to make the figures and graphs that are there? Right? Do I have all the code? Do I have access to all the data and all those kinds of things? Um, and when I put all those ingredients, um, just a minute ago that was called a recipe, together, do I get the same cake, pie, whatever you want to call it, okay? One way to do that, which is what we typically do, is we rerun it, right? And so then we get into the specification, do I have, I, do I have all the right Python packages? Uh, is it the right version? Things might break, et cetera. Another way is to actually have more confidence that that original run actually happened as the authors claim it has. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about that second way of doing it. Um, this is a joint project uh, with uh, collaborators at the University of Illinois. Craig is online, I didn't see anybody else. Um, and with um, my uh, fellow uh, data editor verification person at uh, uh, Odom Institute to my uh, Christian. Um, let me get this forward. This isn't working there. Oh, okay. So um, we're worried about completeness, right? We get a package that's deposited somewhere. It's on Zenodo, it's on OSF or something like that. There's a bunch of stuff in there. Do I have everything that's needed? Sometimes things are not there because they're confidential. Sometimes things are not there because they're too big. I'll need some documentation about that. That's fine, right? Do I have all the conditions and was everything created from this? So a few of the reasons why re-executing the code when it's trivial, we'll just do it, right? We, we click onto an online platform or we just download uh, the R file and we'll just run it all again and that's fine. That's fine if it takes a few minutes. What about if it takes a day? What if it takes three months? What if the data that I need to download is half a, per, uh, half a terabyte, right? Um, so those are conditions where that becomes difficult to do um, that doesn't make the research in principle less reproducible, it just makes it harder. In some cases, it makes some of the research actually not be reproducible per se. It might be replicable in the sense that I can do something similar, but not the exact same thing when, for instance, the data has to be deleted. That might be because there's a data use agreement with a private company. It might be because it's health data. It might be for some a variety of reasons, right? So transient data, large data, long computation times are issues that come up where that all that might might be an issue that it's not trivial to figure out just by rerunning the code whether I have actually everything. But if the authors are honest, they did it all the first time, right? So how can they prove that? How can they verify that? Well, somebody just claiming to be that doesn't necessarily work, right? Of course, everybody can claim that. So what we're thinking about is what we call certified transparency is to somehow figure out a way that we can trust that that first run that the authors did that ended up in the paper actually happened as they claim it has. Now that will necessarily involve some third party that has credibility for certifying that, right? So um, that party will need to have a record of these computations and will then issue as a certificate, a signature that this actually happened as it does. And there's a few things that you can think immediately around that, that come into play. Is that third party biased? Uh, does it have a conflict of interest? Does it have credibility? Does it have the technical means of doing these kinds of things? And uh, we've thought about that, um, but we're calling this a trusted research object that essentially could be published. 
and then doesn't need re-execution because it's credibly created the first time around. Okay. Um, so what we have in mind here, think of, uh, say, you're at a university, your university has a uh, compute infrastructure, you might be accessing some remote Windows desktop, or you might be running on um, an HPC system or something like that. Now consider that the university describes that system. It's a system that once you've submitted your job, you can't pull it back, you can't modify anything while it's running, even if it's running for three months, right? And that's accessible to all the researchers at the university. University puts its credibility on the line by saying, when it comes out of this, here are all the things that were produced. Here's a complete list of them. We're gonna sign it, the provost will sign it, or some digital signature that's posted on the university website will sign it, et cetera. Here's the whole package. Right, here's what went in, and maybe it's too big to post, so we removed a few things and they are listed, but they were there when this was run. And here's what comes out of it. Here's the tables, here's the figures. It might be a rendered markdown file. It might be, if you've upgraded the platform, a quarto file, whatever it happens to be, here's the stuff that comes in. Right? And we're going to post it on our university repository with a signature on there. The authors can't modify it. It's as it is. So the university's credibility sustains the fact that the researcher has done this the first time around, and there's a record that's sufficient for somebody curious enough, interested enough to figure out what went into this whole thing um, that that seems um, to have produced this. So we're talking typically about enclosed systems. We're talking about systems that are outside of the control of individual researchers. I can't think of a way to make this run on your laptop. So it does require some buy-in from platforms, university or others. Um, so I have a question for Sam at some point in time about whether their platform would, for instance, provide that kind of thing. There are uh, platforms that do something similar, right? Um, and at the end, as a journal, as a data editor at a journal, I don't need to rerun these things. I will get a certificate that says this ran fine the first time. Now, this is not super novel. Let me just skip forward to this. There's a few of these entities out there that provide such services. Right? So in France, there's a service called Cascade that will do certification of reproducibility. They have humans who do essentially what I just described. Right? Uh, there is, for instance, CodeOcean as one example, as a commercial cloud-based platform that produces reproducible research on a platform that's archived, and they serve signal by assigning a DUI to a particular compute capsule that it was actually run the way that it claims to have been run, and that everything is in there that's, that's un, uh, unmodified. Right. So one of the problems we're trying to solve is that um, I know what they do because I've inspected them. Right. It's my job to do that in part as a data editor, but I can't do that for hundreds of platforms. I can't do that for every university out there. So how can we get to a place where I have some knowledge about what they're doing in a way that is quick to verify? So I don't have to sort of dig into and talk to people and call a few people up, et cetera. So what do they do exactly to verify what we're doing? Right. And so our specification of, of what we call the trace system description of the uh, trusted research object formulates it as a set of questions, right? For instance, does the object contain the exact code that was used to execute what's there? Or, or is there some modification that went into it? And if yes, what kind of modifications might that be? Is that documented, et cetera, right? Are all the outputs included in the object? On simple objects, that's trivially yes, that's probably a good answer. But what if the data is confidential? Then some of the output objects uh, and the inputs are not going to be there, right? Do I have a complete system description of the software environment that was run, right? Uh, was this run using Docker or virtual machines? What version of particular R? What kind of package versions are out there? Is there enough information to sort of understand what was happening here, a complete description of the, of the system environment? Does the system prevent, for instance, internet access while it's running? We tend not to think about that, but dynamic resources are things that can easily disappear or that can be, uh, results can be brought in. That might be a feature that one might be curious about. Was this an air gap system or was somehow internet access prevented? So everything that's in the system is truly everything that was accessible to the analysis code that was run. Right? And we can think of a few more things, but uh, we're um, at the stage of where we're formalizing what kind of format this might actually have, how, what does this look like? We want it to be general enough to encompass both machine-produced 
signatures and certificates, but also human produced ones, right? So the examples of my own universities are squared or a cascade. These are people running it who get objects from researchers who then run through the analysis in some fashion. Do they have a clean image of a new laptop every time that they run through this or do they reuse laptops or things like that? What can I learn about the way that they do this? It must be accessible to that kind of service as well, because in some cases, I'm almost certain that not everything can be run as a single master script that just runs for three months without intervention or things like that. Okay. So we're interested in your comments about this. We're interested in how you can think of how this can be implemented, about what are salient features of such um, a certificate can be, what kind of questions it should be able to answer. And um, we hopefully will have some sample implementation soon. With that, thank you very much.